Out of Stone Cold, the Hellraiser is back. Here we go. Evolution of the Shield. John Cena versus the Show. Stop her. Hulk Hogan and The Rock in the same ring. You will never take my place at the head of the table. Undertaker on the Hell's Gate submission. Oh my God. What? My God, Michaels. Just kick Cena's head off. The Monday Night Hey, what's going on, guys? And welcome back to WWE Rat Show on the WWE Podcast on this Friday, September 16th. As I am back in the saddle, obviously I missed last week. And as I've spoken about ad nauseum over the last week or so with Matt... Because that moving sucks. <laughs> moving really does suck. I remember Friday last week, uh, tried to record, and lo and behold, get home from work. My girlfriend had packed everything away, and we had to drop one for, from the vault. But uh, I am here, and now that I'm fully moved in, because I don't know if you guys know this, but I actually moved twice in the last three months or so. So it's been absolutely hectic living out of a bag at a temporary residence and whatnot. Um, so now I am here, I'm in my office, my new office, but, uh, obviously I'm sure you guys can hear a bit that it's a little echoey, but now I am set, I'm ready to roll for the long term. And today we are going back to 2016, all the way into two early 2019 for Smackdown Live, the house that AJ Styles built. And You know, this show was inspired to me by a meme I saw. It wasn't even a meme, it was just a picture. And it was a picture of the SmackDown Live Survivor Series team from 2016, which was AJ Styles, who was the WWE champion at the time, Dean Ambrose, Bray Wyatt, Randy Orton, and Shane McMahon. And the caption read, SmackDown Live or SmackDown in 2016 hit differently. And it really did. When they brought back the brand split in 2016, we had had about a five, six, seven year run where SmackDown had just completely taken a backseat to Monday Night Raw. And that's typically what has happened historically when you go away from the brand split. Although since SmackDown has moved to Fox and Roman Reigns has been predominantly exclusive to SmackDown, that tide has kind of shifted a bit, but we've at least had somewhat of a firm brand split. Not completely, but they've somewhat or mostly stuck to their guns in that regard. But prior to SmackDown going to Fox, and we even saw this in the summer of 2019, right before SmackDown shifted to Fox, is that you quickly realize that SmackDown becomes the B-show when all wrestlers are floating between the brands. So when they were bringing back the brand split in the summer of 2016, with SmackDown being headed by Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan and Raw being headed by Stephanie McMahon and Mick Foley, they knew that they had a lot of work to be done here. And when they selected their first couple of wrestlers to go to SmackDown. Obviously, their first pick was was Dean Ambrose, who was the WWE champion at the time. Then they selected, quote, the face that runs the place in John Cena. And they also selected a newcomer to the WWE. The SmackDown second pick. We would like to announce the phenomenal So AJ Styles was actually selected second by the SmackDown Live team. And I had forgot about that. I was convinced that it was John Cena. But as the draft has worked since 2016, that for every three picks that Raw gets, SmackDown only gets two because of the length of the respective shows. 
So AJ Styles goes second behind Dean Ambrose to SmackDown Live. And this was pretty big that AJ Styles went second, especially when you consider that John Cena went to SmackDown, Randy Orton went to SmackDown, Bray Wyatt went to SmackDown, The Miz went to SmackDown with the Intercontinental Championship, Dolph Ziggler went to SmackDown. For AJ Styles to go second to SmackDown after just six months in the company, debuting that year at the Royal Rumble, spoke pretty highly of where they had positioned him internally by this time. And he was just in the middle of a feud with John Cena that he had started at the er, at the beginning of the summer of 2016. And instantly, SmackDown felt legit. And, you know, they bring in the new theme song. They had that short-lift camera angle where it was kind of like a... Not on a track, but like on an extendable arm, and it would kind of like hover around the side of the ring that was closer, zoomed up to the ring. I don't know if you guys remember that. And they were making a very big effort to make SmackDown feel different. The production of the show felt different. The commentators felt different. And with a newcomer to the WWE going there at such a high draft pick, it certainly did feel different. But... With John Cena going to SmackDown, we obviously had him kind of dominating, at least in the early going, that brand, along with Dean Ambrose, the WWE champion. And we had the famous soundbite of John Cena being called by SmackDown Commissioner Shane McMahon, quote, the face that runs the place, something that AJ Styles took hard issue with in the early going of SmackDown Live. And they were booked to have a match at SummerSlam 2016, and no pun intended, an absolutely phenomenal match. And in the early going of SmackDown Live, this rivalry, arguably the best rivalry of the last six, seven, eight years, and I don't say that lightly, but they were just so damn good together. And the build to this rivalry and this match at SummerSlam really made you feel that SmackDown was oh so important. I have been waiting for this moment for a long time. This is a history-making match. You gotta be kidding me! Sanders City Gallows! AJ Styles beat John Cena! When your back is against the wall, you got your ball Me 
SummerSlam, you know what it's gonna be? When I beat you, and then on SmackDown Live, you come out to the world and you say, AJ Styles <laughs> is better than me. And if you don't, John, you're a liar. And if you do, you are a loser. Either way, I win. So that kind of gives you a background on how important it was for AJ Styles to face John Cena at SummerSlam 2016. And he beat John Cena one-on-one clean right in the middle of the ring with a phenomenal forearm. One of the best matches I had ever seen out of John Cena, not going to lie. Uh, I, in my opinion, AJ Styles brought out the best in John Cena. And it kind of, this rivalry... For John Cena, in my opinion, kind of hushed his haters. Because I noticed a palpable difference with his reaction from the crowd as soon as he went through this rivalry with AJ Styles. And when AJ Styles beat him at SummerSlam 2016 with not only Cena losing clean in the middle of the ring, but also putting on like just a phenomenal match. Again, no pun intended was something that really kind of showed like hey you know what like if you if i have to wrestle differently or if i am booked differently i can do whatever you want and it is kind of crazy to think back that seven years ago or six years ago at this point they were already talking and there was already hints that john cena was slowly making his way out the door of wwe and now we see that if we see him you know once or twice a year we're lucky but uh This was right around the time when John Cena started to get phased out. So AJ Styles beats John Cena and right away gets catapulted to the top of the card and the top of the roster in WWE, specifically on SmackDown. And this results in him challenging Dean Ambrose for the WWE Championship at the Unforgiven pay-per-view in 2016 which was the first brand exclusive pay-per-view oh pardon me it wasn't unforgiven it was backlash it's just historically backlash or sorry unforgiven was the pay-per-view that would typically follow uh summerslam but it was backlash and it was the first brand exclusive pay-per-view to smackdown since they brought back the brand split and aj styles goes one-on-one with dean ambrose for the wwe title and it was at this pay-per-view where AJ Styles would officially, or unofficially, depending which way you looked at it, be coronated as the new face of SmackDown Live. So AJ Styles, with the help of a low blow, defeats Dean Ambrose to win his first WWE Championship. And it's rare that you see a world title change on a B-level pay-per-view, like a Backlash or a No Mercy or a No Way Out or what have you. 
and especially now in the midst of Roman Reigns' historic, endless, nauseating run to a certain extent, it's kind of weird to see this happen. But it just goes to show that at times, if you want to pull the trigger on a big move at, let's say, uh, an unconventional platform or on an unconventional platform, it could sometimes work. And uh, for me, this was something that was kind of came out of left field. And, you know, I'm a guy that really supported Dean Ambrose as the WWE champion in 2016. And I thought that he was a big part of legitimizing the SmackDown Live brand. But... I mean, AJ Styles was on fire at this point, and his feud with Dean Ambrose in 2016 was one of the more entertaining ones. From him to go to John Cena right into Dean Ambrose, it was just an absolutely fantastic first year for AJ Styles in WWE. You know, he comes in, starts off with a program against Chris Jericho, then goes to Cena, then goes to Ambrose, winning the championship leading Team SmackDown against Team Raw in uh, Survivor Series 2016, him and Ambrose fighting all the way along this path, it was absolutely great. And he takes the championship right into early 2017 until you get the return of John Cena. And John Cena challenges him to a WWE Championship match at the Royal Rumble 2017, a match that arguably was even better than their first. So John Cena defeats AJ Styles to win his 16th WWE Championship or World Championship. And this was significant for AJ Styles because in a losing effort, he kind of cements himself in history, right? He becomes the guy that was involved in the match where John Cena would tie Ric Flair's championship record for most world title victories. And, you know, it just goes to show that even in a losing effort you can play a significant role in wrestling. And this was a moment where AJ Styles, you know, at this point, this marked the first full calendar year of him in WWE, and he had already done so much. And, you know, post losing the championship to Cena, he gets involved in a program with Shane McMahon, And they go on first at WrestleMania 33, if I'm not mistaken. And I thought this was kind of like a a step back for AJ Styles. But I got to say, they really knocked this out of the park. 
and he really did a good job with Shane McMahon in a non-gimmick match to boot. Like, usually Shane McMahon on big stages will have gimmick matches like Hell in a Cell vs. Undertaker or Steel Cage vs. Braun Strowman or what have you. Um, but this was a match where they really put on a good show. And it was something that I think that booking-wise was kind of, you know, a slap in the face to AJ Styles in a lot of ways, especially seeing as how good he was in his first year. But to be honest, WrestleMania 33 was kind of all about bad booking. You know, Dean Ambrose being on the pre-show against Baron Corbin for the Intercontinental Championship was a disgrace. Jericho and Kevin Owens going on second uh, for the United States Championship, where, according to Chris Jericho, they were originally slated to go against each other for the Universal Championship in one of the best long-term storytelling uh, storylines that we had seen in quite some time, going back to like September, October of 2016. You had Undertaker main event the show with Roman Reigns, arguably Undertaker's worst match at a WrestleMania. So it was, um, it was tough to see this, you know, but at the same time, the booking was bad in my opinion, but uh, the execution was off the charts. And the following night on SmackDown, we got to see a new version of AJ Styles. It's certainly been a wild ride over the last couple of days down here in the Sunshine State. Monday night in a row. Vincent Kennedy McMahon, in, in his own fashion, announced we're going to have a superstar shake. So what does that mean? That means excitement for all of you that fill arenas. That means excitement for people watching at home. That's excitement and new challenges for Daniel Bryan and me. And I have to say this one thing. Uh, do I dare say that any superstar on the Raw roster should be praying the fact that they end up here on SmackDown Live? Because we have all together created the land of opportunity. So after defeating Shane McMahon at uh, WrestleMania as a full-blown heel, AJ Styles comes out, shakes his hand, and gives him, uh, tells everyone what he is, and or what SmackDown Live is, and that's the house that AJ Styles built. And he stays on SmackDown as a babyface, but overcomes Kevin Owens, and along with Kevin Owens is the United States Championship. And this was during Kevin Owens' Face of America gimmick. And 
you know, when Kevin Owens talks about the last time he held a title in the WWE, he's referring to this time. It was during his feud against AJ Styles in the spring and summer of 2017, where they traded the U.S. championship, I believe, two or three times, uh, is the last time he held the championship. And this was a bright spot for SmackDown Live during a time that was, in my opinion, pitiful. Because the Jinder Mahal WWE Championship title reign, to me, torpedoed SmackDown as a brand. To the point where I quit watching SmackDown during Jinder Mahal's reign. And this isn't a slight on Jinder Mahal. Actually, it is a slight on Jinder Mahal. But it's not his fault. Because Jinder Mahal, pre-championship reign and post-championship reign, is nothing more than a jobber. When is the last time we saw Jinder Mahal win a match on pay-per-view? When's the last time we saw Jinder Mahal have a singles match on pay-per-view? I would argue the last time we saw Jinder Mahal have a match on pay-per-view was against Drew McIntyre at SummerSlam of 2021. Jinder Mahal, unfortunately, was put in a position, and I know some people prefer this storyline the most. I think Matt even prefers this or liked this storyline or didn't hate it. I despised it, as you can tell. But it was it made no sense. It made no sense then. It makes no sense now. It makes even less sense now because they didn't even push him really. I know he had a cup of coffee with the US championship uh, in 2018. But just a bad, bad time for SmackDown Live. And you have Jinder Mahal feuding with Nakamura and Randy Orton for the WWE Championship. And you have AJ Styles and Kevin Owens, the t- arguably the two hottest wrestlers in the company at the time, two most over wrestlers in the company, feuding over the United States Championship. And look, this was great for the United States title. I think it did worlds for that championship. But that feud of AJ versus Kevin should have been for the WWE Championship. And you could have had Jinder have a solid run with the US title. You should have just flipped the titles in these programs. But when I feel like I'm more invested for the mid-card championship and have zero interest in the main event, that's an issue. That's a very, very, very big issue. And it was something that really hurt... um, It really hurt the SmackDown Live brand in 2017. It really, really hurt the brand because no one cared about the world championship. No one cared about the most coveted championship that the company has to offer. But lo and behold, when AJ Styles was through with uh, Kevin Owens eventually, their match culminating... Uh, or their rivalry culminating, I believe it was at Unforgiven, where Shane McMahon was the special guest referee, which would ultimately lead into Kevin Owens versus Shane McMahon. And AJ Styles would eventually drop the United States Championship to Baron Corbin. AJ Styles would once again set his sights back on the WWE Championship. And heading into Survivor Series where it was slated to be Jinder Mahal versus Brock Lesnar, champion versus champion, AJ Styles would have a chance on SmackDown Live to gain his second ever WWE Championship. Styles, 
close here, though. AJ Styles' body's practically limp. Just end this mercifully, Jinder. Oh, no, no, don't do this. It's Jinder Land, this AJ may never fight again. The Hall is trying to go to the top here on Styles. Styles elbows right there to the Hall. Styles fighting for survival on that top rope. AJ Styles rightfully retakes his spot at the top of SmackDown Live and a place that he should have never left, in my opinion. But when he defeated Jinder Mahal, it was like they had finally, finally turned the corner and gone back to some consistency and sustainability at the top of the SmackDown brand. Because you had to remember that since he had lost the championship, he goes from it goes from John Cena, then two weeks later to Bray Wyatt, then quickly thereafter to Randy Orton, then to Jinder Mahal that no one cared about. They put the championship back on AJ Styles and it instantly feels credible again. And he would hold this championship for a full calendar year. And along the way, he retains it in a handicap match against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn at the Royal Rumble 2018. He has a long-standing feud with Shinsuke Nakamura that was kind of underwhelming, specifically their first match at WrestleMania uh, 34 uh, in 2018. Their rivalry spills all the way into the summer of 2018. And then you have the very underrated rivalry of him and Samoa Joe. Obviously, a lot of history to tap into there um, because of their history going back to TNA Impact Wrestling Samoa Joe, arguably the highlight of his run in the WWE, obviously referring to AJ Styles' wife throughout it and all that. And they had a very, very great um, rivalry all the way into the fall of 2018. And then right leading in to Survivor Series of 2018, we think we're getting a rematch from the year before of AJ Styles versus Brock Lesnar, champion versus champion. A fantastic match that was won by Brock. And a couple weeks before, about a week and a half before, in the same fashion that we had seen AJ Styles win the championship one year prior, he drops the title to Daniel Bryan, who had just returned to the ring just eight months prior and turns heel and becomes the planet's champion. And Daniel Bryan would hold this title in, right up until WrestleMania 35. He would successfully defend the championship again against AJ Styles at the Royal Rumble in 2018. And AJ Styles would move on from the WWE Championship. He would face Randy Orton at WrestleMania 35, winning that match. And the next night on Monday Night Raw, or uh, the or the second or the the superstar shakeup following WrestleMania 35, AJ Styles would get drafted to SmackDown or to Monday Night Raw, and that would kind of close the book on AJ Styles' run at the top of the SmackDown card and being the face that runs the place, and SmackDown Live being the house that AJ Styles built. And AJ Styles has not won a world championship since dropping the title four years ago, or almost four years ago, to Daniel Bryan ahead of Survivor Series 2018. He has some pretty much been a mainstay on the Raw roster since then. He spent one year or a handful of months on SmackDown uh, during the pandemic era when he won the Intercontinental Championship. But I think AJ Styles has one run left in him. 
uh, one main event run left in them, in my opinion. And that is why I think it's imperative that they get at least one of the championships off of Roman Reigns sooner rather than later because the clock is ticking on AJ Styles. He's not a spring chicken. And uh, I think he deserves one last run. Obviously, it's no longer SmackDown Live. It's just SmackDown. And, you know, that era is far and away gone. And Roman Reigns is kind of the the face of SmackDown right now. So if you want to give it to him on Monday Night Raw, go ahead. But I just think it's very important to remember that from mid-2016 to early 2019, SmackDown Live truly was the house that AJ Styles built. And he was the face that ran the place. And he made the blue brand feel instantly just as legitimate and on par as Monday Night Raw. Well, anyway, guys, that's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed SmackDown Live, the house that AJ Styles built. As always, you can get me on Twitter at Adamarco25. You can get Matt on Twitter at Wrestling underscore audio. Or you can email him each and every week for the WWE mailbag. Anyway, guys, enjoy your weekend. I will talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show. Or head to wwepodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to patreon.com slash wwepodcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.